What is up YouTube and welcome to this promising young woman recap, breakdown and editing explained. This was a seriously powerful movie that kind of came out of nowhere for me and featured a really, really great cast as well as Carrie Mulligan who personally I haven't seen her in a movie since probably The Great Gatsby. It's nice to see her return and the other major highlight was the sort of co-star Bo Burnham but he had a twist that really hit different and there will be spoilers in this video as well so if you enjoyed the video please do consider dropping a like down below and subscribing with notifications on and check out the other stuff we do on our channel now we open with some dudes in a club just chatting as guys usually do as they notice a total mess of a woman drunk alone and seemingly looking for her phone however the guys debate going to talk to her which one of the guys does under the pretense of being a really nice guy. Yeah, you can see where this is going. Man, I really hate guys like this. It's always the weird skeezy guys walking out of the club with a girl who can barely walk, which is pretty much what happens here. Like the nice guy he thinks he is, he offers her a ride home and she's lost her phone, but coerces her into going back to his when she's really barely conscious and more than half cut. He makes his advances on her at his apartment, except she's not drunk at all and asks him what he's doing. She's been doing this to lure men into thinking she's vulnerable and then giving them a sharp shock of a life lesson and trying to get them to change their ways. And the way that men in the movie make their advances is very, very tough to watch and very gross, which is why they're so impactful. Now she walks home eating a hot dog and is cat called, but soon turns the tables on them, which they think is weird. Now throughout this movie, it's an interesting lesson that is told about how a woman does what a man does or tries to get justice or revenge. Well, she's a psycho, but the man is a stud or a badass. Now she returns home and we learn that she lives with her parents who seem to be mystified as to what she's doing, going out and staying all night when she used to be a med school student. Now she's doing all this because of her best friend Nina who was assaulted in college while the group of people watched. Cassie then dropped out of college with Nina to look after her only for Nina to later sadly take her own life. She wants to stop men taking advantage of drunk women, which is the big theme throughout the movie. Now, each time she finds someone, she writes a name down in a book, but also has a list of people she wants to get revenge on who are complicit in Nina's sad passing. She goes to work, and I thought Laverne Cox was great as her boss, Gail, and Cassie is seemingly the worst employee in the world, as she's rude to customers as her boss, Gail, says that she's been seen going out and getting wasted, but no one knows that she's pretending all this time. Suddenly, an old colleague mate comes into the shop, Dr. Ryan Cooper, played by Bo Burnham, and he recognizes her as he puts his foot in it, asking her why she works in a coffee shop. He asks her out to no avail as she spits at his coffee, but he drinks it anyway. Yes, there is a clear but weird connection here. She prepares to go out and watches a blowjob lips tutorial. And funny enough, a little Easter egg for you here is that the director of the movie is the one giving that tutorial, which is a funny Easter egg. She goes back to a guy's house to again convince him to change his ways about taking advantage as he does drugs and talks about his novel. Yep, I've known men like that and they're just the worst. I like how each guy that takes her home is different and it's funny to see Christopher Mintz Plass, aka McLovin, but she trips him out by revealing that she's conscious and her face is priceless as he's trying to get his way. He forces her to do drugs and try and get her to stay and wake up, but Carrie Mulligan is really the femme fatale here. Now the next day, it is her birthday and her parents have bought her a suitcase in a not so subtle hint to get her to move out. Yes, I cannot actually put it out of my mind. That is the woman from, yes, Legally Blonde and Stifler's mum. But I don't think they're trying to get her to move out. I think they're desperate for her to just get her life on track and not, as they know, go out and get wasted. But Dr. Ryan comes back into the shop as, well, yes, she's given him the wrong number and manages to convince her to get lunch with him. But the pair finish their date as he invites her up for a 
cup of coffee and changes his mind, which she gets weird about. Now, this is supposed to be the nice guy who will fix her, so to speak, which always happens in these types of movies, but I thought it was good how he turned out to be just as bad as the rest. The next day, they discuss if they still talk to anyone, and he barely remembers Nina, but deep down, she is very interested in getting dirt on Alexander Monroe when he is mentioned, and he is the one who assaulted Nina. Now, funny enough, Al does work at the same hospital as Ryan, and she instantly starts to look up Al on Facebook. I personally think that Bo Burnham is great in this role, and... On this stalk, she comes across Madison, played by the ever-brilliant Alison Brie, and they catch up at her hotel. But the whole plan for Cassie was to get her as drunk as possible in prep, in case Madison seemingly does not give her the information she wants or repent for what she did. They have a back and forth until Nina is mentioned, and Madison seemingly blames Nina for the whole thing. And she says that she got blackout drunk and she's just completely awful. And Madison, uh, played by Alison Brie, it was nice to see Alison Brie play a different role here. As all I can think of is Annie. But yeah, she's far from Annie from Community here. Madison is the first in her revenge plan as she sends a man out to go with her while she's drunk after Cassie leaves. And it's all to make Madison think they did something together. And the man was just there to look after her in the end. But it's a whole thing, an exercise to make Madison think in a different way and actually have some compassion. Now, the next target for her rip-roaring rampage of revenge was the principal of the college that both her and Nina went to. She tricks the college's principal's daughter to come with her by pretending to be a makeup artist for a famous band. It's funny as the daughter is just awful herself, only helping her if she can meet the band and has no remorse for just being really mercenary. Now, Cassie goes to the principal asking if she remembers Nina under the pretense of wanting to continue her education. The principal doesn't remember, but then shows her true colours saying, yeah, there was no evidence or it was Nina's fault or it's six and two threes. But Cassie then drops the plan saying that her daughter is in the same room where the assault actually happened and she will tell her where she is with a bunch of frat boys if she can tell her where that room was so she led the investigation but yeah she can't and after making her squirm in a tent scene she relents and tells her she's just at a diner but the daughter is pretty dumb but she's got the good looks as cassie says now she returns home but on the way a man is rude to her as she snaps and smashes the car up and it's clear that she needs some sort of therapy or something for this as she gets home to find Ryan waiting for her, just relentlessly chasing her. Now, she's forgotten the date and blows him off. She goes out to stalk a man again, only for it to be the guy from the start of the movie who pushed his mate to actually go and talk to her. And I really liked how he would make her walk so he didn't have to pay surge pricing. And it's funny seeing this actor play a vastly different role from his character in Veep as they bump into Ryan. Yep, and it absolutely ends their courtship. Almost. But next on her revenge plot is the lawyer who helped Al Monroe get off, played by Alfred Molina. Yes, it's awesome seeing him here, seeing Doc Ock, who will be returning in Spider-Man 3. It turns out he had a mental breakdown from what he's done over his career, coercing women to drop assault cases, scouring through their social media and making them just look like it was their fault. He did this with Nina's case and Al as well, and he's remorseful, but she lets him off there and... She had a man waiting to go and, I guess, F him up, but she lets go there. She sees that some people can change, but it's rare in this revenge plot as she goes to visit Nina's mother. And after this revelation, and she sort of has a change of heart, which I really liked. I did like this. And she goes to Ryan to beg for him to kind of forget what happened, and it's not really what they saw. But we see a sort of montage as they 
ask each other out again. They're buying snacks as Paris Hilton's Stars Are Blind comes on, which they sing along to. I'm sorry, but this song slaps and was criminally underrated at the time. She seemingly moved on for everything as she has dinner with Ryan and her parents, but Madison, who's been spam calling Cassie all this time, confronts her and explains it was a tape. And she's told that she didn't cheat on her husband in the end. The tape shows the assault with everyone watching. But the awkward thing here is that Ryan was there watching as well as she is horrified. Now, she had a break in this plot. She was starting to get her life on track. But now she decides that no one is good. She's horrified by this. And it breaks the happiness she had. Her revenge plot goes into fifth gear. And she confronts him at work. And says she will reveal this tape to everyone. Unless he tells her where Al's bachelor party is. She did try earlier on Facebook. But it, she couldn't find anything. As she deleted her social media. And he gives her some weak ass excuse. As it's one bad that he's there. And two he didn't say anything and uh, didn't give a statement or any confirmation of the tape or anything, which would have helped in the case and would have helped Nina. But he does reveal his true nature here as she goes to head to the party as a nurse pretending to be a stripper. It's curious as every time she goes out to make men see how bad they are, she has these painted nails and the colors are now in her hair showing how serious this target is as she heads into the bachelor party and instantly the men are salivating as they think that she is the stripper wearing Nina's necklace. Now instantly she gets all the points wasted just like she did with Madison and makes them all pass out and she takes the bachelor upstairs. He acts all bashful and says that he's a gentleman or whatever. A far cry from the past and the reason why Cassie is getting revenge. She says her name is Nina Fisher, which he instantly recognizes. He knows exactly what happened and how Nina was ruined by what happened, but he says that he was stressed. It was all consensual and things like that. And he's got the perfect life with a marriage very soon and the job that Nina and Cassie wanted. However, he escapes and the restraints were pretty whack, and he suffocates her, which was an absolute shock. That was really hard to watch, and I did think that she had a plan to get out of it, but she didn't, as the next morning, Schmitty, sorry, Joe, comes to help him hide the body. Now, she is missing for a bit, and each person is interviewed, and we had Ryan get interviewed, and he doesn't really say anything because he's a coward, And the thing is, she had an insurance policy. She sent out a letter to Jordan, played by Alfred Molina, with the info about what happened, where she's going, what to do if she goes missing. And she did send scheduled text to reveal everything to Ryan on the day of the wedding. And revenge for him is hinted at, because it seems like the tape will come out for him, and he will be complicit in what happened. And the text is obviously signed off Cassie and Nina, with Al being arrested and Joe runs off. She also sends her part of the necklace to her former employer, which was really interesting to watch. Now, overall, this movie was great. It it was stunning, and it really did show that Carrie Mulligan needs to be in more movies. She needs to have more leading lady roles or leading person roles. I thought it was a real powerhouse. Everyone involved was bringing their A-game to this movie. So let me know what you think down below. What did you think of the ending? Because there are some theories out there. I'd love to hear what you think. And do subscribe with notifications on. And drop a like if you enjoyed it as well. And I'll see you soon. And goodbye.